Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be fixing this here tractor here. I thought. Look at what I got. Fits on the shaft. Just perfectly. However, this is some stuff that you just can't make up at this point. Again, this is uh, one, two, three, four. This is the fifth wrong part from three different companies. Well, I got this side all together. Everything went pretty good. Once well, got everything moving, um, got everything to adjust. Even got the uh, adjuster down there to turn nice and freely. Got it nice and greased up so it'll continue to turn in the future. Um, all new parts in there, new, uh, linkage and springs and, um, everything's new. All right, one more thing I wanted to add to this. Um, right here is the part number on that seal. Um, this is from CarQuest. Now, if you reference that number through NAPA, it comes up as a different seal. Um. The measurements on the seal are different and everything. Uh, not exactly sure what's going on with that or why that was happening, but something wasn't right in the system somewhere. CarQuest was the one that managed to get a part number with a dimension that actually fit. So there it is. 470059. Here are the last seals that Eggco sent me. Um, inner diameter was right, but as you can see. Um, and then the other ones were so big, um, I think Ted mentioned it, that they could have been the ones, uh, well, they more than likely, I'm guessing were the ones inside of the, the wheel axle there. Um, I don't know. As I said, they were cross-referenced. Uh, not only I looked at the charts, but the parts guys did too. And that was the third seal they sent me that was wrong. So anyhow, there's the correct one. Just one last time, show you that four seven zero zero five nine. Okay, I've got that side all put back together for the most part. Then I've got the main studs there loose jack under there and then the cherry picker here just holding that up and that'll come out with the cherry picker pretty simple process if you get it set up right um, I uh, I got everything moving separately and freely the way that it should here uh, these brakes all seem to work and everything look good in them but this here if you'll notice it's there's a pivot point up in here that needs to be moving in order for everything to work right so I gotta take it apart and at least clean that up and uh, take a look at the seal inside of there and we'll go from there I guess um, so now I'm just gonna pull this out and I'll bring you right back, show you what it looks like inside of there. Just something I feel like worth noting here. Um, you can get this out without taking your cylinder off. Um, you just got to take the nipple off of it. Um, you can, uh, you got to make sure that you're bringing everything out straight so that you get off of your bolts there. Make sure you're not stuck on them. And then it just takes a little bit of a lift and a push and it'll come right out so something i wanted to note while i was taking this apart here and then that stuff actually uh the linkage moves up out of the way and that's you gotta put these all the way back and then you can get the linkage to get up out of your way there so i'll pull this the rest of the way out and bring you right back so there we go 
uh, the pads now they look pretty darn good in here same on the inside everything looks good there there's no oil leaking out of it um, the thickness on them pads no cracks problem is I can get the camera in here not like that down in there that linkage right in there is not moving well it's not moving correctly and then uh, down where you can't see it is where that rod comes in the adjuster rod link uh, I gotta get that moving too so all right we are the next day now um, I decided to be lazy it worked out for me you guys see my oil squirter here uh, you remember the way that the brakes were there with that shaft down there spring works this morning look at that isn't that something everything's moving and pivoting in there um, yeah like I said lazy way out uh, I just squirted oil down there on all of those pivot points that were not moving for me and uh, came out this morning and the pedal was up and everything was good so what I'm gonna do is take some brake clean um, also replace the springs in there uh, but anyway I'm gonna take some brake clean and I'm gonna clean them pivot points out down in there the best I can get that old rust out of it re-oil it and put this thing back together um, we'll talk about a couple of things that uh, if I were taking this apart um, a lot of times these pins won't come out uh, they get stuck in there what I ended up doing on this side um, was I cut the the brakes brake pads here off with the die grinder um, and then we were able to get a big set of vice grips in there and turn that and finagle it out then um, now, could also, uh, if it's really stuck, you cut, you know, cut a couple inches of this out. Once you get the pads out of there, you know, cut a couple inches of that pipe out or that shaft out and then beat the shaft from the outside in, you know, so you get that outside out of there. And then um, you could get a pair of good uh, vice grips, channel lock something on the other half and spin that one out even if you had to grind a couple of flat spots onto it so you get a hold of it because that is a it's a hard rod um, the bottom one kind of the same process with the bottom one if you got to take it out um, I didn't go that far because I didn't need to thankfully but uh, you know all that stuff needs to come off there and uh, kind of do the same process with a torch cutting that bottom one out of there uh, if you can't get the puller to pull it out which nine times out of ten it won't uh, usually takes a torch and some heat at least down there so not one I like to mess with and I try to avoid it um, the linkages down there as long as you can get them to move uh, move freely and um, I really don't see a reason to have to, to replace them down there I suppose they could wear out and stuff but I just haven't seen it so all that being said, uh, I'm going to put this thing back together. Um, I guess last thing I wanted to note for the seal in there is still nice and flexible. Feels really good, no cracks. Um, feels new yet, so I'm not going to replace the seal in there either. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. Um, yeah, that does it. I'm going to push this thing back together. And uh, we'll bring you back for a little bit more. Talk about a little bit more about this thing. Okay, let's see what happens here. See if I can not make a maroon of myself on the camera. It went swimmingly on the other side. Put it that way. But, got a couple other things in the way on this side, so. A little bit more of a pain. Uh, the linkage. 
suppose I could put a zip, another zip tie under there. Maybe it would make life a little bit easier. Um, anyway. Try and get that shaft lined up in there without digging anything up, obviously. is lined up now and we're stuck down here just just a little maybe maybe not all around crooked think that I've got got this one over here up too high came apart nicely but the way it looks here just a tad bit too high so put that down a little bit it a lot. Now we got our gap lined up there. Actually I might have went too too far. Yeah. There we 
go. Now what? Usually I have a lever on here, the uh, fender, so that I can use the fender to, to tweak that to go onto the bolts. I don't have the fender right now, and that's what, we're just not quite lined up, and I need to spin that. Um, it's going to cause me a couple of issues because I don't have a lever to do that with, but... I'll devise something, you guys don't need to see that. Um, you see the point, you see the process. It's, it's really simple even by yourself. So, um, Just a matter of patience, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to figure that out. I might have to put the side plate on there just so that I got, like I said, I got a lever to tweak that and get it up onto my studs. And then uh, everything is lined up and it'll go right in for me. That's just a matter of uh, putting things together and getting that bugger adjusted. So, bring you back shortly. Okay. So I got to thinking and I just used my little bar here through there. I, I don't know. One of the things where you're overthinking stuff. But anyhow, uh, once I get them lined up, like to use just a C clamp there, pull it together far enough that I can then get my either a stud started or a nut started on a stud, and there you have it. Not a hard job at all, but just take some patience. Alrighty, look at that. Almost a complete tractor again. Minus the fender. Uh, I'm going to hunt down a couple of decent fenders. Well, better than these. This one was the better one of the two. And you can see it's... I mean, it's acceptable. It would last, I guess. If you didn't care about it. But um, it's been up and has seen better days. So I'm just going to get two 
presentable ones that are going to go on this tractor. Um, and then once I put them fenders on there, um, I'll be asking 4000 for the tractor. I think it's pretty fair considering what it is, uh, Series 4. Um, take it from a person that buys a lot of used tractors. Um, you're not going to buy another one that's as mechanically sound as this one for that price. Uh, I'm not just saying that just because I'm trying to sell it. I'm saying that from experience. Um, the new brakes, the brakes and everything, uh, Alice Chalmers guys, for sure, you know how big that is. Um, it's kind of a big deal. Um, the new seat being rebuilt there, that's, you know, not the biggest thing. But that piece that I rebuilt, you can't buy them. And you got you got to take that to a machine shop or um, have it done up. Uh, the seat itself I've got up all the way on the spring back here. Um, so you can see right down here I added the bushing. And right here, same thing with the grease. Zerk that I need to grease yet. Um, now what I didn't do was rebuild like these that were wore out. Um, like these sections in here, you know, so you do have a little bit of that side play yet. Um, however, as far as suspension wise, you're looking good. Uh, I weigh about 190 pounds. I'll get up there and bounce on it and show you guys what that is looking like. I've also got the brakes adjusted. Uh, those are factory specs the brakes are adjusted to. So, like I said, I'm 190 pounds. Don't even come close to bottoming out. Uh, brakes are just super nice. Work really well. Uh, got them adjusted the same. Uh, clutches on this thing are in excellent condition. Uh, gas tank is really clean. All new fluids. Uh, everything is new except for the power steering fluid up in the power steering reservoir. Um, the only reason that I didn't replace that is because I opened it up and it looked like fresh um, transmission oil in there, transmission fluid. So I just left that alone and everything works good. doesn't make any noises or anything like that. Uh, radiator is in good shape. It's got new fluid in it, like I said. Um, you can see right there, the it's probably the only spot that I see on here that the fins are messed up at all. Um, you guys remember I had to fix that. Um, oh, the charging system on this tractor. Uh, I haven't tested it yet. Um, I'm going to take the regulator part and I'm going to test everything and see if it's working. Uh, but my plan is, is I'm not going to mess with it right now. Now, if, if you were interested in buying this tractor... Um, reason that I'm not messing with it is because this would be easily fixed if it doesn't work, which I'm going to mess with a little bit here. Might work. I don't know. I guess it may be talking too early. But um, if somebody wanted this to be original, I didn't want to take that stuff off of there. Uh, if you are buying it and you want an alternator on it, let me know and we can work something out. Um, so, I mean, that's that's kind of where that's at. Or... Maybe buying it, want a little bit of a project. There's something that you got that you can do. Uh, another thing, the the battery tray there. It's not in terrible shape, but it is not quite right, and there's pieces that are rotted off of it. So that's another thing that could be easily replaced. A little bit of a project to do on it. Um, Okay, so the 4000, buy it with the fender on it, with the fenders on it. Um, now I can get the side tins here, and which I can just send you to the place to get them if you're that concerned about it, or I can get them. And also the seat. If I were to get those two items, um, they're around $600 to replace those. It's crazy, I know, but uh, that would reflect onto the price. Um, of the tractor itself so um, I guess that's something you let me know too I guess whatever 
Am I leaving too many options here for trying to sell this thing? I don't know. Don't really care because if it doesn't sell it will fit in around here. I'll find a use for it somewhere doing something. <laughs> um, a couple other things. The tires are uh, they're in pretty good shape. But as you can see there, when I get close, you can see some dry rotting. Not real bad. And they would last a long time. Uh, the rims. You see the surface rust there, but there's no rust uh, started anywhere that's coming through. That's all seems to be surface rust. You can see the valve stem there. Just nothing going on there. Uh, I don't believe that there was ever fluid in these tires. The rim over here. Uh, the front rim here is uh, Farmer Special. It obviously broke and they did some stuff to make that work. Um, it's more of a cosmetic thing than anything. Appears to be just fine. But that's something else that if you wanted it to be right you would be looking for rims. And that's like a old Buick rim or something or old Chrysler rim. Not sure old 40s car uh, now this rim here this rim same thing there I don't believe there was ever fluid in them and same with the tire it's got a little bit of dry rotting on it I want you guys to see that other than that um, yeah you got yeah, that's that's something I need to make really clear. This is not a shuttle clutch. This is not forward and reverse. This is just high and low that somebody hunted down the shuttle clutch lever here and just put it on this side so that they had their high and low on this side. Which, uh, considering that the hydraulics and everything are over there and your throttle's over there, once you got used to it, I think it'd be pretty nice. And I'm kind of used to my loader tractor being over here. So really, when I get on it, I kind of feel it doesn't bother me. It doesn't. I don't have to think about it. I actually kind of like it. But uh, seems like a really good tractor. I'm gonna. I'm just kind of waiting. I just filled it with fluids, all new fluids here. So I'm waiting for that one to settle, so that I can make sure that it's all topped off. Same with the other one over there. And then uh, I'm gonna fire it up, drive it around a little bit. I'll get you a little footage of that. Um. I guess we'll go from there. I don't know what else to add at this point. I've been blabbing on quite a bit about it. So then I'm probably going to make another video um, just trying to sell the thing. So all of this that I just said is probably just a repeat in like the next video on the darn thing. But whatever. Moving on. Well, there it is. Runs really good. Um, brakes work really well. Very happy with it. You can see all the marks here in the yard we used it a little bit and uh, got the next project in here so this is where we'll go ahead and end this one um, this is like I said obviously the next project uh, as far as I know all I need to do is replace the head on this it's got a cracked head I have the replacement head right there and the gaskets are in that box right there all the gaskets for it um so not too bad of a project um like on the alice's yeah anyway there's less stuff you got to take off on the tractors i'm used to this one it kind of looks like everything just kind of needs to be pulled off and out of the way so nothing hard just a lot of bolts it looks like so Look forward to that project. Should be coming within the next week here. Uh, so we're going to end this one. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Um, also keep an eye out for when I get that 17 all buttoned up. A uh, for sale video, driving it, starting it, cold start, all that fun stuff. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Um, if you liked this episode, consider giving a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to catch you guys in the next one.